Welcome back, parents. Jordan Langdon here with you again. And today I have the privilege of interviewing a wife, mom, and best selling author. This woman is a small business operations strategist and the founder of Operations Agency. So, welcome to the show, Allison Caffrey. Thanks, Jordan, for having me. I'm so excited to be here. We're so glad to have you. Parents, the reason I invited her on the show today is because we got to talking about weaving in work and family life and doing it in a way where we can truly be present to our family. And it can be really hard. But Allison, through her own trials of being both a business owner and a mom, has found some really awesome tried and true ways where parents can be efficient in their work, scale their businesses to like seven and eight figure businesses, all while being present to their families and feeling happy about the quality and quantity of time that they're spending with their families. So I figured with all of that, we had to have her on the show. So Allison, jump right in and tell our community a little bit about your background in business and your own family dynamics and how this all sort of came together. Ah, thank you so much. Um, I just want to say that to all the parents listening, it's hard. Being a parent and running a business is so, so, so hard and it's constantly evolving and it's constantly changing. So I'm totally going to share what works for me and what has worked for the people that I have surrounded myself with and in my community. And if there is something that, you know, you're doing that is working, excellent. Please keep that thing and make sure that you double down on those things. I think one of the coolest things that we can develop as parents is just being lifelong learners and understanding that things will always be changing and always be adapting. And so just take, you know, the conversation today as just that, right? Let's consider what can we learn from this and what can we weave in, even if it's just a small thing. So like you said, Jordan, I'm a mom of two. <laughs> I've got two businesses and it is a crazy, crazy ride. I've had operations agency, um, you know, my full service agency for six years. We're going to celebrate six years in October, which seems pretty crazy to actually say out loud. Um, and I have worked behind the scenes in multiple growing seven and eight figure businesses, really being that operations strategist behind the scenes. And my team behind me was able to really create a lot of systems, a lot of throughput, a lot of automation that has helped teams save time, save money. I mean, you know, keep clients for longer, you know, onboard team members faster, you name it, we've done it. Um, I joke that in the early years, I was the sweaty operations generalist. Um, people would hire me in and they would just give me these projects that seemed really complicated and they couldn't really figure out, they couldn't tease out their core elements of fulfillment. They didn't figure out how to, you know, really centralize their core data. And so I would come in and I would just detangle a lot of this mess. And, uh, my clients kind of like jokingly referred to me as the wolf, for a lot of years because I would just come in and I would like clean up and hide the bodies and like do the whole, the whole mess. Right. And it was really, really fun. And then I had a baby and I remember being in the position where early on in the business, I had had my business for three years when I had my son, Frank, and I was still working mostly on my own. I had a small team supporting me, but I was still very much the linchpin when it came to fulfillment. I was the one jumping into the meetings. I was the one strategizing with the teams. I was the one doing a lot of the high level, you know, work on a lot of our accounts and still doing a lot of the documentation effort behind the scenes. And, um, I had my son in August of 2020. And there's this lovely photo, just absolutely lovely photo of me and my first baby. We're sitting in the hospital and, you know, I've got him in my arms. And the next frame that frankly wasn't captured because we tend not to capture the really confronting moments is me setting my son aside so that I could answer Slack messages and emails from my team members and my clients. And there are very few moments in life and in business and in all the things that really give you this really stark representation of where your priorities are. And that was mine. I literally mm. put my child down to pick up my business. And that was clearly my priority from literally day one. Like he was born at 1245 in the morning and then the sun came up and I had the very first full day with my son. And that's what I chose. And at the time, honestly, 
I wore it kind of like a badge of honor. It was like, look how committed I am to my business. Look how committed mm. I am to my clients. And look what I get to do, right? I get to answer these emails and be flexible and do this from the hospital. But like literally in the back of my mind, I was like, no, Al, this is not, <laughs> this is not glorious. This is not good. And it was also kind of confronting for me because I'm the systems girl, right? I was like, surely I should have been more prepared for this, right? Surely I should have known that this was going to happen and, you know, been able to see all the throughputs that I could have created for myself. But the real reality of it was, is I didn't have a business that had grown to the point where I had enough resources to invest in really getting me out of the day to day. So I needed to get crafty and come up with a different plan. So that's what I did. From there, I said, listen, no more of this. I'm no longer going to be putting down my child and picking up my business. I'm going to create a relationship that feels like it really fits. And I did it for myself. I had my second baby only 17 months later, if you can believe it. And Ooh. that experience went so much smoother. And we experienced such a huge growth year because I was able to really consider what does my business need to look like to support my family and not the other way around. Wow. Oh my goodness. I'm just sitting here listening. I've got a visual of you in the hospital and I can imagine a lot of moms in, in that position. You've got a new business. You don't have the resources to outsource these, these tasks. You're crushing it. You're passionate about it. You also are excited about having a baby. He's delivered and still, right? We have to go back to doing work in the business, right? Because you're afraid probably if you leave it, for a period of time, something is going to crumble and then your world is really going to come tumbling down. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, you know, I know so many women um, speaking with colleagues, other business owners, other mompreneurs, they say to me, like my, my, my one friend, Jenny said, I had my baby on a Thursday and I was back in the office on a Monday and it's just heartbreaking sometimes to feel like you don't have a choice, right? You're just reluctantly pulled back into this thing. And, you know, a lot of women I know love running their business. A lot of parents I know really enjoy co-creating these really incredible solutions together for their marketplace, for their community. And ultimately, if this relationship doesn't get you know, really teased out in the early stages of being a parent, um, the bit, you either grow to resent one or the other, right? It's, it's a really sad, but real truth is that you feel like you can't be present at home because you, if, especially if, you know, your business is a sole income provider for your home, you are in a position now where you need to make a choice and you need to make a choice almost every single day, almost every single second of every day, because there's no boundaries, right? When you work for yourself and you work at home. And so we need to be intentional about creating those boundaries because what we don't want to do is we don't want to look at our kids and say, you know, you're the reason why I wasn't able to affect this change or, you know, launch this new idea out. And we don't want to look at our business and say, you're the reason why I don't have a relationship with my, my kids and with my spouse. Right. So we need to be able to consider just really intentionally designing that versus just kind of letting it happen to us. Mm, you said that word intentionally designing this, right? So being intentional about how you go about this. That is the name of the game because that puts us in a place where we can be prepared and we can be responsive. We can plan ahead, right? I'm all about that. Otherwise, like you said, we're blocking and tackling. And and with that, I agree with what you said. We, we come to resent one or the other. And sometimes it's both. I've had moments myself where I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to throw this business out. I'm quitting. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> right? That, that's yeah, the only way to so make true. this happen, to be better, you know, connected with my family is just to quit this nonsense. And it's like, whoa, wait a minute. I really, that's not really what I want, but what I need is some clarity in how I run my business so that I can have better boundaries and be really present with my husband and my kids, you know, outside of that work time. Yeah. So, I couldn't agree more. Help us kind of understand what did you start doing? You said that after you had your second baby, things were a lot better and a lot different. Talk to us a little bit about what you did that made things different for you as a business owner and a mom. Yeah. So first and foremost, let me just say that becoming a parent is by far the most incredible leadership training that I personally have ever been through and believe that any person 
can literally go through. So I think just by becoming a parent and going through the experience of being a more patient um, and being a more empathetic leader is excellent. That directly translated into the way that I manage my team. So I think even if you could just consider that a gigantic win, what you go through, especially in those early months where, I mean, it's sleepless and you need to really just dig deep and consider like, what, you know, what am I here for? What's my purpose, right? To keep this wonderful little thing alive. Um, So I personally felt like it with both of my sons and as I continue to grow, you know, into and evolve with them uh, as the mother that they need, I do believe that this is a lifelong leadership training that is, you know, second to literally none. Um, So that's the first thing. Uh, The second thing that I translated directly into my business and kind of the more tactical thing that I did was I just considered what is my model and does this serve my family and the way that I want to spend my time? I am um, infamous for taking Fridays off typically. Um, And uh, a lot of folks know that, uh, you know, they can only get on my calendar on a Friday if I'm like super excited about the project. Like I want the zero reluctance. Like I'm super pumped to be on things on a Friday. Um, otherwise I'm hanging out with my kids. Like that's just how that goes. And so I started there. I was like, okay, what does that look like? Um, the second thing I did was I said, how can I make sure that I am present for every single feeding, right? So as a mom, that needs to be true if you are in a position where you're breastfeeding. And when that was not the case, when my husband was giving bottles or when we switched our kids over to formula, I still wanted to make sure that I was present for those times. And it's now carried into all of the meals that my family shares. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner, it's super important to me that we have those three touch points throughout the day, no matter what my schedule looks like, especially if I'm here at home in my home office. So I started with the Fridays off and I started with the actual meal times. So blocking those times out, you know, when they're newborns and and littles, right? Those times are much more frequent. So I would be there and, you know, block my schedule accordingly. So what I started doing was just considering what is the life I want to have? And I need to put my business on the other side of the equation. So what that looks like to me, um, you know, tactically inside of operations agency is I needed to consider what is my model. I was a one-to-one service provider at the time. So that meant that my model needed to change a little bit, right? Or else I would hit a financial ceiling and I would hit a time ceiling because there's only so much of me. And that equally translated into the revenue that I brought in in operations agency. So what I did was I did a little bit more of a one-to-many model. Um, We productized uh, a lot of the ways that we start out, you know, early business owners with operations really defining their operational function because we found that 70 to 80% of what they were needing, especially in our target market, we worked a lot with digital marketing agencies and still do. Um, They just needed a lot of the same things. So what I did was the work to really systematize that. I said, okay, let's create some amazing templates. Let's train our internal team. Let's make sure that people can write processes on my behalf and write workflows on my behalf and lead strategic meetings. So I started there. I started with my time. And it's something that I think a lot of people don't do. They're like, oh, I just need an assistant, right? I just need somebody to like organize me. But I'm actually the first person to say, and I'm sure there's so many moms here listening to that like organization is like totally not my problem, right? I need a person who's an extension agent of me. I need someone to be able to come in and create the type of value that I create for my clients just at a larger scale. Um, And we found that really well in sort of our productized service. And then we also created some digital products that would kind of be our our lead in uh, products, right, to kind of working with us. So that helped kind of liquidate our ad spend and get us into kind of the digital products game, which I felt was really accessible. And it was something that didn't require any of my time other than the initial build and some maintenance, right, as we like learn new things and update the templates and the videos and all the things. So it was so much more accessible from a time perspective for me. And I never would have kind of broken out of that one-on-one model and unlocked new levels of growth, not only in my business, in myself, like I mentioned, entering into motherhood, but also in my team. My number two, Lauren, has grown and soared beyond anything we could have ever expected for her in such a short period of time because she was given the platform to lead a team of folks that were delivering for us. So she is an instrumental piece of my team and is so, so, so excited about the growth, uh, you know, opportunities that we have ahead. And I've been able to staff under me um, and be able to show them that I trust them, right? Developing this, these systems, show them that they have a place here, that I trust them, and they've been able to really support me past anything I could have ever imagined. Wow. So many good tidbits there. I love how you started <laughs> off with just like, hey, here's the first thing I did. Because I think as busy parents, you know, who are working outside the home, at home, for ourselves, as stay-at-home moms, there's always one thing 
that you can do to get the momentum rolling in a different direction. And so I even made some notes for myself. Uh, one of the first things that you said was, or, or one of the most kind of poignant things that stood out to me was start with your time, right? Consider your own time and where you can, uh, where you want to be present most with your kids. So Friday's off. I love that idea. And it, it doesn't have to be Friday, right? It could be Wednesday, it could be Monday, but it was interesting as I was going for a walk before we jumped on this call, I was thinking back to when someone gave me the advice of a four day work week. And I was like, yeah, right. That means I have to work four tens to get my 40 hours. Like I was really in this concrete box where I just thought, well, I have to fit in 40 hours. I got to fit in 40 hours. And mm -hmm. I thought he was nuts for suggesting this. And then I got to thinking about when people go on vacation, they take a vacation and time off and they literally shut down their operations to be on vacation. And there's this vacation mode that comes, right? When you're preparing to be out of the office. And so some of the things that you do for that really help so that the operation can run while you're away. And then you can come back and not be flooded with all the things that didn't get done. And I thought, what if we did that on a weekly basis, just for our home setting thought, you know, no, we don't have every single day to do laundry. We don't have every single day available to us to, you know, run to the grocery store. And just thinking about taking one day away from myself for work, helped streamline things significantly. So I love that you're doing that. Just take one day away from yourself for work and trust that you, like you said, you are organized. That's not your problem. You can get laser focused. I, I'm not sure about men. I'm, I'm a woman, but moms kick butt when it comes to this right? We're like, we know we have to fit all these things in a short period of time and man, we can do it. And so what great advice. And then just the idea <laughs> of like, Hey, Jordan, I want to be present for three meals for my kids. You know, that's important to me. Where do, where do I want to spend my time crafting your work day around those, those, uh, feeding times with your kids. Brilliant. Love it. And then he said, you know, it just as a business person, being a one-to-one -one provider, right? Offering like one-to-one -one coaching, I'm assuming is what you're talking about, or or one-to-one -one consultations. It takes a lot of your time to do that, you know? Mm -hmm. And so expanding to do a one-to-many or or a group coaching type of thing, it makes sense for you. It's it's beneficial to other people. Man, you you got this thing figured out. It's a work in progress, just like everything worth having, right? And I think, um, you know, it's still iterative even to this day. And I think something I said early on, I remember saying to Steve, like we were about six months in with our first son, Frank, and he was like, I just need you to tell me what you need. And I said, I don't know what I need, but I like if you'd help me figure it out. <laughs> and I remember like in that moment, I also thought about my business. Like, I don't know what my business needs right now, but I am committed to figuring it out and I'm committed to having the systems in place and just understanding that those systems need to exist, but they don't need to look the same as they do today, mm. two years from now, right? So if I think you just establish that there need to be boundaries, right? If we need to like check that mental box in our brain, like there need to be boundaries around how we safeguard our home time and how we safeguard our business involvement. Those boundaries need to exist. Do they need to look the same today as they look tomorrow even? No, right? Because tomorrow we're going to learn new things about our children, about ourselves, about our business, about the world around us. And we can always be changing and augmenting um, and always be learning about the newest ways to do things. So this is the way, again, it's worked for me. And I'm super excited and happy to be able to share this um, confidently and elegantly with folks. And I know that I'm going to learn something maybe this afternoon <laughs> that I'm going to implement into my schedule. And I just uh, always think that it's it's so fun to be able to explore new and exciting ways to actually make it work as a parent. Because I mean, again, there's just no one size fits all solution to being a great parent and being a present mom and being, um, uh, you know, a fantastic business owner. You're right about that. It's, it's unique to each one of us, but I am a firm believer that structure and a framework of some type helps us get started, right? We don't want to just 
from scratch figure this out and <laughs> figure out these systems. It's like we don't do that with much of anything else in our life. Why would we do that with our families? You know, so it's always good yeah. to have somebody come along and and coach you around the the principles and the practices and like step one through five, right, to get you started. So then then you don't need someone else's support. You can, like you said, augment your your own system and you know, adjust it for different seasons of family life. I mean, I have um, kids age nine to 17. I have a senior in high school all the way down to a fourth grader. And so there are, I mean, every two or three months, there's kind of a new season emerging. And so it's important that we have a, a, a system within our family that we operate within and are constantly trying to kind of be a little bit more efficient with, uh, but then to kind of do a seasonal review and say, okay, what's coming up, right? What's coming up and how can we adjust for that? So mm -hmm. it sounds like you're doing that at your household. It's, it's working. I can imagine too, that with your business and your passion around helping others with setting up kind of, um, you know, standing standard operating procedures within their businesses and within their homes, that you're also like, hey, if we want to expand our family, we're able to do that too, because yeah. you yourself have these, you know, procedures in place for, for you right now. Yeah. I think one of the biggest things, and I love what you said, Jordan, because I think you're right. Like we don't really do this with anything else in, in our life. Right. And we have our children and then we just think that everything's going to come naturally to us. Or, you know, we begin a business and we just fake it till we make it, or we wing it or we do whatever. Right. Because we just know that we can move forward and, you know, toward the quickest path to revenue, you know, typically right inside of a business. And I think creating some structure around what is working based on the expertise of others who've walked that path is, amazing. And it's an incredible gift that we have access to now with the connectivity of, you know, our communities um, that, you know, my mom, frankly, and her mother before that did not have. And so we have access to a lot of these really cool resources these days. And it's helped me, I think, parent better as well. And I think one of the coolest things that I think I can help families with and something that we do fairly often is a create the standards of operating, right? So like, what are the non-negotiables? What are the things we know we absolutely need to hit? And how are we tracking those day in and day out? Because what we don't want to do is we don't want to pick our head up in our life and consider, well, where did the last six months go? How come I haven't made it to dinner in the last two weeks or any of those things? So really those boundaries help protect the family time and they help protect the business or whatever else is going on inside of your life life from creeping into or cannibalizing that time with your family. So I do firmly believe that, you know, obviously a lot of us start businesses, a lot of us, you know, work in companies that we feel really aligned with that message and that mission. And we want to affect positive change. And I've known a lot of professionals and a lot of business owners who have let that really take from their home relationships, whether that be with their spouse, whether that be with their friends, and especially from their children. You know, I think a lot of, especially young parents, parents with young children, they'll say, oh, well, they can't remember. And I'm like, well, I remember dang it. <laughs> like I remember, and I want to remember the fact that this time is short and I was able to actually spend the time with my family. And I remember talking with a colleague recently and she's like, Hey, listen, we're considering having another baby, but I just remember how hard it was. And like, I don't know if I can go through that again, both like physically and because she's running her own shop. And she's like, I had to spend way too much time away. I felt like we got set back and I never want someone to have to choose. Like, do I grow my family? Do I take that vacation with my family or do I grow my business. We can have both. It just takes some discipline and it does. It takes some sacrifice. Um, I was talking with someone recently who said to me, I don't have a routine. I'm not a routine person. And I was like, I have some tough love for you if you are ready to hear it. And she said, okay, yeah, bring it on. And I was like, you need to come to terms with the fact that you do have a routine. It just might not be the routine that's actually serving the future vision of what you want your life and your family and your business to look like, right? We all have routines, whether we want to admit it or not, right? We wake up at nine o'clock, perhaps, you know, we get up, we do breakfast, um, you know, maybe, you know, we move our bodies, you know, we do specific things every single day. And there are for sure some more routine or disciplined people than there are others, but hear me that the routine exists. It's just not intentional to serve the goals that you want. And so I think if we can consider that we alone hold the power
power to design the life, the family, the business, right? Enter that, you know, that thing on the other side um, that we want, then we can kind of take the reins and just consider, okay, what systems can I put in place to make sure I never miss a mealtime? What systems can I put in place to make sure I never miss a workout? What systems can I put in place to make sure that we never miss a wrestling match, right? Because those are the important things that are going to carry into the future of your family life, of your community, um, and, and ultimately, you know, the legacy that you leave, you know, after you're gone. Yes. I want to underscore how you're talking about intentionally prioritizing your life. You're talking about time with your spouse, time with your kids, time for yourself, your own health and your body before your business. And people constantly will say, no, I can't do that. That might work for you, but that doesn't work for me. It does work. And it's the proper order of priorities to put the person you chose to be with for the rest of your life, your partner, mm -hmm. your husband, your wife, in number one, seat number one, and then your kids, right? Because it took the two of you to create this family <laughs> and to nurture yourself, to nurture yourself, to say, I am worth a walk every day. I am worth a trip to the gym and I'm still going to weave in my work after those things have been prioritized and, and tended to, right? Mm. Because without that, we get down these rabbit holes of all of a sudden that's flipped on its head and work is a priority. We're running and burning the candle at both ends in the middle and we're burnt out and I'm wanting to jump in the car and go to Santa Fe, <laughs> my happy place where I feel like when everything's going out the window, I'm just going to get in my car and drive. And that's not, that's not the answer, right? Yeah, no, it really isn't. And I love what you said earlier about seasons, because I do firmly believe that life isn't about being in balance all the time. It's about knowing and preparing for the season that you're in, right? And I think um, a lot of times, a lot of us think, well, I need to give equal time to my family and to my business, or I need to always be doing this many hours or that many hours. The fact of it is, is there might, there might be some things that you're working on in your business that do take the majority of your time for a season. However, we need to realize what are the non-negotiables for that season. We can't just let relationships fall by the wayside because we have a focus at work. And then same deal, right? Like we can't, you know, sometimes like I've prepped folks for three months off sometimes um, from their business, um, whether that be a for a maternity leave or a sabbatical, leadership sabbatical, or, you know, a health sabbatical, you know, if, you know, push comes to shove and we really need to take somebody out and say, hey, listen, we need to work on our mental health. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that you can't let the, everything fall by the wayside, right? We need to keep the lights on and we need to keep some of those things moving. And we also need to communicate with the people who are key stakeholders there, right? So let's just say, for example, you want to prepare for a maternity leave. We need to consider making a plan, being intentional about that plan, identifying what cannot fall behind when we're out for that amount of time and communicate that with the key stakeholders, you know, your team members, you know, your partner, make sure that they understand what exactly they are enrolling into when they decide to support you in this season. And I think a lot of folks um, don't intentionally plan enough to be able to have those conversations. And that's why when focus goes to work, you know, partners get left in the, in the wake and families get left in the wake. And it becomes a really challenging thing to kind of discuss because there was no original discussion for how this was going to go, right? Even recognizing, hey, listen, the next three months are going to be really challenging for me on the work front. Or hey, business partner, I'm going to go home and be super present with my family for this three months. And here is what I'm willing to give you and at what cadence through that time. And I think it's just, um, you know, it's, it's about being um, clear, with what you want. And it's about being clear with what the season looks like. And also too iterative in the fact that, again, we can make really great plans and identify really amazing things, but being okay with the fact that we are going to augment based on, you know, what we're learning throughout the process about ourselves, about being a new parent, about running a business. And, um, I think it can, um, be so much better than, just letting it happen or just kind of going with the flow, right? Because I know a lot of us want to do that and we think that businesses equal freedom, um, you know, or, you know, certain levels of, you know, success equal freedom, but it's not the success that's going to bring us the freedom. It's the systems that are going to bring us the freedom and the being in place, right? It's kind of that gigantic safety net below us that says, okay, no matter how great things get or how bad things get, I'm still going to be here to catch you from completely, you know, combusting <laughs> your marriage 
damage or completely combusting your relationship with your children or blowing up the business because we've had a crazy month or whatever, right? We have those systems in place to say, hey, listen, actually, Jordan, you don't need to pack your bags and go to Santa Fe. It's going to be all right because this is the season. <laughs> <laughs> so agree with you. I love that phrase. Success is not what brings freedom. Systems are what bring freedom. And that is 110% true. I couldn't agree more. You know, discipline sets us free. And, and I remember being a mom, a young mom and feeling like, you know, Oh my goodness, Allison, I can't plan for maternity leave. I'm in the thick of it. Like I can't even think past tomorrow or I can't even imagine taking a, a one month sabbatical or traveling abroad, you know, for, for two months and being able to come back to my job or, or to keep my business running. Like that's not even in the cards. That must be for those people someone mm -hmm. else, you know, they must have some, some privilege or, or gift that they've been given or some superpower that I just know I don't have. And so that's just not something I could expect for myself. But what I was missing is that, you know, I think as busy moms, even when we are in the thick of something and we feel like we can't think past today, if we will just trust through the experience of other moms who have come before us, um, that, it's okay to just continue doing what you're doing right now and cast a vision for what you want and dream wildly about what your life would look like. Like taking those vacations, you know, building in a sabbatical in your work life and, and try to kind of, you know, break down those, those barriers that are, are limiting us from dreaming and allow yourself to dream. Don't feel guilty about it, but go there. Just go there for 30 minutes on a Saturday morning before your kids wake up. Just dream, right? <laughs> then come back and touch base with someone like you who is coaching and consulting with parents on how to put a system in place right where they are here today. You know, not something that's going to work five years from now when they're finally making $75,000 a year or six figures a year, but today to walk them through this and to implement these, these systems that help create these daily habits that set you free. <sighs> I am just loving <laughs> what you're putting out here. So good. Oh, I appreciate that. And you know, it is simple. It is simple to get started. You don't need um, a team. You don't need access to a ton of resources and you don't need to be able to craft a big fancy plan. Um, like we talked about before, really, it's about assessing your time. And I actually find, um, I was talking about this <laughs> the other day on my social media, actually, that a lot of us say, well, I just needed an extra day or I need more time in the day, right? A lot of us say that. Um, but my opinion is, is that, you know, we use time in ways that don't provide us return sometimes. And I think if we consider that time is the most valuable currency, we have more valuable than money or anything else we could possibly imagine, um, that we need to make sure that we're investing it in the right places and invest it in places that are going to actually provide us a return, um, like our health, right? hands down, probably one of the most important things, um, eating well, taking the time, spending, um, you know, spending the energy to prepare yourself a healthy, nutritious meal and being disciplined about that, right? Not moving from one thing to the next, right? Consider where we can grab non-return time to be able to focus on that, right? Time like scrolling social, watching television, drinking that extra glass of wine, sleeping in, right? Like those things, um, while they can take a season again, I find a lot of folks, if they're really, really looking at their calendar with a fine tooth comb and they're saying, hey, listen, what am I doing right now that's not serving me if I'm binge watching Netflix in the evening because I want to escape the crazy day I had? Like, let's consider that if we remove that and spend the couple of hours trying to craft the new life that we'd like to have, then perhaps we won't need that vice as much in the future. So I really do encourage parents that for literally no cost, just the, the discipline to be able to recognize where we are and create a vision for 
moving forward and just implement a couple simple steps. It's not going to be an overnight transformation, right? You're not going to, if you start to focus on your health, you're not going to immediately go on like, you know, a, a whole foods diet and like have that happen overnight and get a six pack in your sleep. But like we can make some of the decisions and start deciding to be the person that we want to be earlier than we see the result. And that's the hardest thing, but the thing that will ultimately bring us the most success. Mm, I love that. Do you have a tool to help us with that, to help us to cast that vision or to kind of assess where we are right now so that we can get started? Because again, I'm thinking to myself with kids in diapers and like, okay, that sounds really, really great. And then when I, you know, hit end on this podcast, I'm going to jump into to doing something and then not know where to get started. And then it'll be like, well, I was really inspired, but now I, I have the knowledge of this, but I'm not doing anything about it. So now I feel actually worse than before I listened to the episode. <laughs> so I'm always trying to, you know, extract like, okay, now, now we've got this knowledge. We're feeling pumped up to dream. Like how could we just, you know, practically start dreaming or assess where we are today? Yeah, totally. So if someone is a business owning parent listening, um, I have a lot of tools for, you know, assessing your business on whether or not it's what I call quote unquote kid proof, right? When we kid proof our home, right? We put the, the socket covers over the sockets and we're really trying to protect our children from getting hurt inside of our home, right? We want to make sure that they have a safe place to play and be and grow up and be happy and excited. And we can do that with our business if we're really intentional. So I have a checklist um, that I frequently um, give to my parentpreneurs called kid proof your business checklist. It's absolutely free. Um, and what we do is really walk through the assessment of how does that look? How are we spending time in our business and how are we structuring our business to be able to get a lot of time back with our family? That's for my business owning, um, parentpreneurs. I think, um, for me, like starting with sabbatical method, my book that came out in June, it's excellent. And, um, I think that it kind of operates a little bit like a hard 75. Um, so I know a lot of us are really overdue to, to take rest from our business um, or just in our life in general. And I think like oftentimes what ends up happening is we end up going in one direction too far for too long. And then we pick our head up and we're like, what on earth is even going on here? And really what I love doing with my clients, with my family and my friends, anyone who will trust me to ask for my advice, um, I always say like, hey, listen, what would this look like if we just stopped for a second and like got out? of the weeds of what's going on here and really just took a look at like where we're going. Because I do firmly believe that it's challenging to see the label from inside the bottle. And in the sabbatical method in the very beginning, I talk a lot about this time assessment. I talk a lot about whether you're a business owning parent, whether you are a professional parent, whether you're just a stay at home mom or dad or any hobby that you're doing, like you can really take a look at this and consider, okay, where am I actually spending my time? And is this serving me? Um, and I think over, um, you know, over and over again, we do, we fall into these routines that feel easy at the time. It feels like we can't do anything different because that's what Sally down the street is doing. But really, um, we do have the power to spend our time the way that will provide us the most return. So I think, um, starting with, uh, the checklist, if you're a parent preneur, I think it'll be the fastest way. The sabbatical method, um, my book also has a toolkit um, that is free that I launched alongside. Um, I'm all about the free resources and I love being able to meet folks where they are in terms of structure and schedule because transparently it's it's life-changing. And I know that if you get a win here, I mean, you, you can unlock uh, so many different things that you can do with your life and, and with your family, especially if you're trying to create some more time to be disciplined and go through some of the things that you teach families, Jordan. I think like it can feel really cumbersome and overwhelming to consider, oh, it's another thing I have to do for my family and I have to prepare the meals and do all the cleaning and do all the stuff. And now I have to like go through how, you know, my family interacts with one another and how we can be intentional about our culture. And it can feel overwhelming. But if you decide, that it's a priority, you will find the time and the tools that I give can totally do that. Mm, awesome. And I appreciate, again, you emphasizing, you know, if this is something that you want to do, you will find the time, you'll find the time and then get the tools and your life will start transforming. Like you said, not overnight. You don't get a six pack when you look at the gym or drive by it. You got to go in. You got to put in the time, right? And that, I mean, that's that's exactly what's happened in my own life. And that's what I love about what I get to do here at Families of Character and serving parents and coaching parents too, to develop little systems in their family, to have a family huddle once a week. Why? To communicate, to mm -hmm. get on the same page, to find efficiencies in order to find joy and unity in your family again. It's like so possible. So I feel like we are kindred spirits in the way we 
love our families, always want to keep them a priority, but we're like, we're, we're blazing trails here in business too. And that's okay. You can do both. And then also just being able to bless people with free resources. That is like my favorite part of this business is just giveaways, giveaways, giveaways. Like there's, there's your entry point. Take the assessment, the Allison Caffrey assessment. <laughs> it's going to, it's going to get you in that mindset, right? And then the book, you've got the sabbatical method book. It came out in June. It's new. It's on the shelves. It's ready for us, right? Yeah. I mean, listen, if you're looking, I mean, and sabbatical is so fun to even discuss because a lot of people think, oh, it's a month or three months off, right? It's, it's this big thing. Positioning sabbatical is not that. It's what we talked about earlier. It's setting those boundaries. That's what sabbatical means to me. It means a system for rest and creating those boundaries so that you can be with your family, right? So I think for me at, at the time when I first had my son, that looked like meals and Fridays. That's it, right? Those, that was my sabbatical. That was my system for rest. For some who struggle taking a two-week vacation with their family and not checking their email, that could be your goal for the sabbatical method. That could be the why or the thing that you're really committed to pursuing. So I think um, especially to um, a lot of parents for sure, I know, can use some rest. Um, this will help you develop a system and really just highlight the the return on investment for rest, right? Because a lot of us, especially in the U.S., we say, oh, we have to go, 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 go all the time. And there's so many expectations and we're always hustling and we're always moving and we got to get our kid into the art class and also do the park thing and make the snacks and do all the stuff. And at the end of the day, like what is the one thing or maybe two it's actually going to move the needle instead of doing all the things, right? Instead of really putting all that pressure on yourself. Um, and so I think defining what's important first and then considering that rest is not um, optional, <laughs> right? It's going to happen totally. one way or another. And you can either decide to do it when you need it and what you when you really want it, um, or it's going to come and it's going to smack you over the head. And it's likely going to be at a really inconvenient time. Um, from my experience working with clients and folks who come to me and they're like, hey, I've hit a wall with my, you know, my personal health or I just can't run this business anymore and I really need to take some time away to consider what's next for me, that is a voluntold sabbatical. And that's what I want to help folks avoid, right? Is that like, I've hit a wall. I can't do this anymore. This is too challenging and I'm going to give up. Yes. Being on the planning end of that versus the, oh no, we're in rescue mode, right? It's it's the coaching versus counseling kind of mentality that you, yes. you want to prevent people from the big downward spiral. And I love that. And just the idea of, developing a system for rest. Like I just found myself relax into my chair. When you said that, I was like, yes, who doesn't need a system for rest? It doesn't matter what your job is, right? I mean, stay at home mm -hmm. mom is the most, you know, difficult job that does not come with pay or time off or like benefits unless you build that in for yourself. And so mm -hmm. I love that the, the idea that your book is really promoting a system of rest for everyone who engages with it at whatever stage you're in. I, I'm getting a copy. Like I, I was about to pick up my phone and, and like get on Amazon and just hit it and like put it in my cart. But I thought that would be distracted. I, I need to be <laughs> intentional. I'm right in the moment, but it, it's compelling me to want to order this book, The Sabbatical Method. I, I It's in the show notes, folks. Don't worry. We'll make sure you have access to, to purchase your copy. And then also, uh, we're going to go ahead and, and just invite parents to also be part of our community here at Families of Character so that you can stay in the know with things that Allison is providing. So if you're not getting our emails already, one of the things that we do is we send out a single email every Tuesday that has our podcast episode in it. And we include our guests' free resources in that. So if you didn't receive that um, during your last, you know, oh, during the, the email that came out about this, go to our website, famouslycharacter.com, subscribe so that you're you're sure that you're getting these, these free resources. Um, Allison, this has been such a gift. Like I'm inspired. I'm motivated. I feel like I'm on a good track already, but I'm like, oh, this is more. This is more. I can always be learning more. And you're just bringing the gold nuggets. You got a, a free assessment, a book, and your website is, is gorgeous. Just your own personal testimony really helps me realize, you know, I'm not in this alone. There's there's people out here that that really want to 
to do this thing, this business and family life thing and make a mesh well and just thrive in this life together. So thank you so much for blessing our parent community. I had such a fun time, Jordan. And I really, really hope um, that anybody listening who feels like they're struggling right now will absolutely take some action and even just make one small commitment and one small step in the right direction. Because like we were talking about, it's not about overnight change. Um, And I'm just excited to be a part of any small movement that you make in the right direction. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. I echo that same sentiment. And so where do we go to find you? Like if people are like, okay, that's enough. Just give me your Instagram (laughs) handle or something. Like where do they find you? My website is allisoncaffrey.com. You can find all the goodies. Uh, You can link out to the book from there. Um, You can get the Kid Proof Business uh, Checklist. That way you can do a little assessment. Um, And you can also follow me on Instagram. I'm at Allie Caffrey. That's where I show fun videos of me at home with my kiddos and all the behind the scenes work that really I'm doing to um, really intentionally set up my life um, to be supported by my business and not the other way around. Um, so yeah, you can come and follow me. I'm super easy to get in touch with too. So send me a DM if you're like, Hey, heard you on families of character and I'm struggling, like reach out. Um, I'm super happy to help. Um, I was saying to you, Jordan, before we pressed record that like one of my favorite things ever to do is help solve problems. And so I think if someone is like, Hey, listen, I don't know where to start, or this is my specific situation, reach out, send me a DM and I will absolutely serve you. Um, absolutely. 100%. Wonderful. Allison (laughs) Caffrey, you're, you're a gift. You're a gift to parents, to business owners. Keep doing what you're doing. We are going to inundate you with engagement on social media during that time that we've set aside to do that because we're intentional about our social media use, right, parents? <laughs> That's right. Exactly right. <laughs> yes. And let's keep this conversation going. Parents, I just can't stress it enough. You are worth rest. You are worth success in your business and your family. And it's all about being intentional and prioritizing. And just like Allison said, just taking one little step today to make a difference. So I'm going to catch you guys on another episode of the Families of Character show.